I tried making a video the other day which actually led to me creating this video. There is a print on demand company out there that I used to highly recommend but it's just become so terribly bad, it's just gone downhill that not only do I not recommend it, I would say stay clear from it. Before I tell you what that platform is, I want to quickly say if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and let's try and get this video to 500 likes just like I've been asking in the other videos and more importantly than subscribing or liking, specifically in this video, right, please share it because I want as many people and hopefully even the company to be able to see this video so that they actually change. The print on demand company in question is none other than Teespring. Now, I know I have made many videos. In fact, I've got this video here you know, saying how good it is. I've got this video and I've got this video. So I do have a lot of videos out there and I am thankful to have made over 70 grand using the Teespring platform. However, it's now 2020 and unfortunately, the the, the, well, the game has changed and unfortunately Teespring have not changed to suit the game and in fact I think they've just gone way downhill and in this video I want to actually give you the reasons and I want to give you the reasons for my reasoning of why I'm saying this, you know, Teespring is just a terrible, terrible company to go into at this point. I have a few things to discuss and as well as actually, you know, just spreading negativity about a company, I actually want to give you some positive alternatives, other companies you can use and other methods you can use to actually sell your t-shirts. So it all started when I created a post on my YouTube channel asking you for your Redbubble link so I could buy your Redbubble products. And from that, it led to another post of me asking you for your Teespring links so I could buy your Teespring products as well because the whole idea was for me to help you get the trust score by buying your products. This was actually the first time in many years that I've gone through the Teespring platform and actually bought a product. So, like I said, there's a lot of things that have actually changed. Firstly, just a quick tip to everyone. I was seeing a lot of people's designs on their you know, Teespring shops where the design was down here, right? You want to have the design up here, okay? Try not to have the design down there because it's weird having a design on your belly. You want the design to be more on the chest. That was just a side point and uh, yeah, let's get right back into the video. Moving on, the first thing that really, really shocked me on the Teespring platform are their prices. Now I know the prices are controlled by you, but their base prices nonetheless are still incredibly high. and. I wanted to buy as much stuff as I possibly could, but I only ended up buying two stickers and a t-shirt. And the reason for this is the, t the, the stickers were six pounds each, plus shipping, which was around, I've written it down here, nine pounds and five pence each for a sticker. Nine pounds for a sticker. Now, I did a bit of research and I could actually buy a, an official Supreme sticker, which is, you know, a really, really, really expensive brand, for less than seven pounds. So the fact that a Teespring sticker is costing nine pounds is absolutely ludicrous and I just refuse to spend, you know, that much. Which is why I only bought two because I said I was gonna support everyone so I just tried to support, you know, whoever I could. But it's just ridiculous. But I did some digging because at first I thought, you know what, maybe it's just the sellers hiking up their, their prices for stickers. So I looked at Teespring's base price for a sticker which was $3.50. Right, that's a base price for a sticker. Now on top of that $3.50, you've also got shipping and handling, which is a further $3.88. So you're already looking at, well, you're looking at six, seven, you're looking at like $7.30, $7.40 already before the seller's actually making any profit, which is you. So the fact that, you know, you're selling it for $2 profit is not so ludicrous, but I would say, you know, maybe lower your prices just a bit because the $3.88 for shipping and handling is not something you have to pay for, it's something we have to pay for. So you're only paying for the $3.50, so that you're making you know, a good three, four dollars. You could probably lower that to try and get a few more sales on Teespring. Nonetheless, the fact that it costs this much and you're already $7.80 before you're in profit is just absolutely insane. I did some more digging and I went to Redbubble just to see how much they charge for stickers because I actually, bought Redbubble stickers, which I'm going to open, you know, in another video, but the Redbubble stickers cost me around 90 pence to two pounds. That is how much a sticker should cost. Not nine pounds, 
more like two pounds. And that was, you know, quite a shock to me that, especially on Teespring, you know, where everyone has to kind of adapt with the times, they are just stuck with these insanely high prices. And it's not just for stickers, by the way, it's for t-shirts as well. So I bought one t-shirt, which was 22 pounds. I don't spend 22 pounds on a t-shirt. In fact, if I'm spending 22 pounds on a t-shirt, it's probably some make like Ralph Lauren or something like that. In fact, my Ralph Lauren t-shirts were 12 pounds. So 22 pounds on just a Teespring t-shirt, this, this is, this is absurd. Right, that was the first thing. The prices are just astronomical and they really annoyed me. And I feel like Teespring are collectively screwing over both the seller and the buyer in this scenario because I'm the buyer buying your stuff and it was expensive and you're the seller and you have to make it expensive because their base prices are astronomical. So that was the first thing. The second thing is their checkout process. Now, the checkout process is one of the most important elements of the buyer's journey, okay? Picking the product is easy. You just, you just browse and you pick. It's buying the products that need to be as smooth as possible. So I thought nothing of it, right? I added two stickers to my basket. I added a t-shirt to my basket. And I thought, yeah, yeah, let's check out. Let's check out. It should be easy. Boy, was I wrong. Checking out was so insanely difficult. And I'm going to just go through the problems that I faced. So I started by adding it to my basket. All was good in the world at this point. And then from my basket, I had to put in a bit of information like my address and my email, you know, when I went to the checkout. And that led me to a further checkout page that had more information on it with, you know, all the stuff on the side, the details over here. After I put in my details, I put my, you know, credit card details in. And I thought, yeah, okay, this is, this is a pretty good process, right? You put your email, you put your address, you put your credit card, it's very normal, you click buy. I clicked buy and it just went back up to the top of the page and nothing happened. So I thought, I don't know, maybe I did something wrong. So I went through all the sections again to make sure everything was filled in correctly, and it was. And I clicked buy again and it just didn't work. And then after that, my country, United Kingdom, right, disappeared from the list. It went back to the United States. So I went to the scroll, the scroll thing and I was scrolling and scrolling. I couldn't find my country. I couldn't find it anywhere. And this went on for about 10 minutes of me, you know, re-putting the information in, clicking buy, putting the information in, clicking buy with nothing happening whatsoever. Eventually, you know, I was going to give up and any normal, any normal customer, any normal buyer would have given up at this point, right? The only reason why I stuck with it is because I made a post saying I wanted to buy your stuff. So I wanted to buy your stuff and also I was doing it on the video so that would have been really annoying if, you know, I ended the video without actually buying any of your products. So I thought, you know what, I'll try PayPal. So I went through PayPal. PayPal actually ended up working and, you know, I put the information in PayPal, took me to the checkout process and, you know, brilliant, I bought. However, that was about 10, maybe 15 minutes later and it was just a terrible, terrible experience. The third reason, and this is another, another reason around the checkout process, is the website couldn't decide what language it wanted to display in. First it was Italian, then it was French, then it was English, and then it went back to French. I have no idea what was up with Teespring's website, but as a buyer, it doesn't instill much confidence if you can't even decide what language you want to display in. I mean, during the checkout process, everything was in French, I didn't understand it, and then it flipped back to English, right? And then when I tried it again, it flipped back to French, and then when I bought it, it flipped to French and then back to English. It started off in Italian. So this whole, the whole, that whole saga was just, another headache which made no sense whatsoever. I, had, I didn't know what was going on. Now those are the three main reasons why I would avoid Teespring. However, there are a few more. For example, their trust score and their boosted network, these infamous parts of their platform that they say, you know, you can get tons of sales doing, but they don't share any real information with you. So for, for me or for you or for like whoever's selling on Teespring, you just have to simply trust their trust score and their boosted network, which from what I've heard from many other people and from myself as well, does not work one bit. So don't sell on Teespring and assume, you know what, I'm going to just make money with all their organic traffic and all of this kind of stuff because it just doesn't seem to work. Another thing which I forgot to add in the video is the shipping times. You're spending two, maybe three, maybe even four pounds, or I was, for shipping. And I look here, right? You've got, how long will your order take? 
right, another 9th of October. It should be between you 14th and 17th of October. Today is the 14th of September, and it's like this, right? It's a little sticker. There is no reason why it should take nearly 30 days to receive a sticker. Now, I'm sure many of you love Teespring. Many of you are, you know, making a lot of money being very successful with Teespring. So I just wanted to reiterate, this is my personal opinion. This is what I think of the platform based on my own experiences. I'm sure a lot of people have different experiences. Some may be similar to mine. And looking at the comments in my previous video, a lot seem to be similar to my experiences. But of course, if you're having good experiences with Teespring and you're making money with Teespring, then of course stick with Teespring, okay? it's. More if you don't know who to go with and you're trying out different platforms, I would say, you know, just avoid Teespring from the get-go and go to, you know, another platform. A decent alternative is Redbubble, Merch by Amazon. These platforms have good organic traffic. They have really, really smooth and fast checkout processes and, you know, they're in one language. So that's always a, a bonus. And as well as that, it's just fast, it's smooth, it's so much easier for the buyer and, you know, for a seller. Now, way back when I did, when I did Teespring, I used to send a lot of external traffic to Teespring. Nowadays, if you're sending external traffic to Teespring, I would say just stop doing that and send external traffic to a Shopify store instead. Uh, make, a plat make, a, make a website, make a Shopify store, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to make a whole tutorial from start to finish on how to create a Shopify store, how to send traffic to it, how to add t-shirts to it. So let me know if you want something like that in the comments. But nonetheless, I would say just send traffic directly to a Shopify store. It does not make sense nowadays in 2020 to be sending external traffic that you are paying for to Teespring's platform just doesn't make any sense. I hope you got something from this. I didn't want it to be, you know, all negative, which is why I'm trying to say as well, you know, go to Redbubble, go to uh, Merch by Amazon. There are positive messages here and hopefully you'll just, you'll see the underlying message in just, in, in that Teespring has its fair share of problems. And like I said before, regardless of liking, commenting or subscribing, please share this video so that as many people can see it. If, you know, everyone shares this video, then lots and lots of people can see it and hopefully, hopefully Teespring can actually see it and change things, maybe change their prices, change their checkout process, find a language and stick to it. You know, hopefully they can change all these things. Anyway, so that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. Um, and you know, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. If you had a bad experience, if you had a good experience with Teespring, and remember, let me know if you want me to make that Shopify tutorial. Thanks for watching.